Well, Merry Christmas everyone. Assuming I actually released this video on time. I don't know if you've noticed that some of my videos get released uh, months uh, after I film them. But today uh, my purpose is twofold. I want to show you something cool you can do if you've already got existing fruit trees. Uh, it's something I'm going to do a lot more in the spring. Two, to also explain to my dad why he doesn't see a Christmas present from me yet this year. Um, that's what you're actually going to see here at the end of the video. So right behind me, I've got a sour cherry, a also called a pie cherry, uh, one that you, one that's good for cooking. And if you know my dad, you know that for his birthday he doesn't want cake; he actually wants a cherry pie. So today I'm looking to get him a tree, and I've already got one. So I figured, hey, why not make him one of these? Uh, this this tree here was planted in 2015. Unfortunately, I've only eaten one or two cherries off of this tree. Uh, the first year we moved in, it just had maybe six or seven on it. And then this past year, we had a late freeze that actually killed a lot of the um, buds as they were blooming. So we didn't get to have any fruit off of it this year, but it's put on a lot of growth because of that. And we're going to see if we can uh, find any uh, suckers that are coming up that have roots of their own. We'll dig those out, take them off the tree. And if, and if we do indeed find those, we'll go ahead and graft some of its top growth. So let's get started. All right, so taking a look at the base of the tree here, you can see we've got several different suckers. Right here at the graft union, you see we've got this piece coming out. And there's actually a few different spots where it looks like it wants to push out roots, but it hasn't pushed out enough. So that's not gonna be a spot. This is just growing from the side. Let's check out these other spots. Unfortunately, I didn't find any roots over here either, though you can see there's a few buds down there that might want to become roots, but there just aren't any connected here. So let's check our last location. Since these pieces are a lot further from the actual trunk, I have a lot more hope in these. If you're wondering why I'm using a pitchfork, it's to prevent any unnecessary damage to any roots. A uh, shovel would easily cut through what I'm trying to get at here. All right, so actually in moving this, I've already kind of dislodged this one. Nope, I heard a snap. That's not great. All right, take a look at that. We got a really decent sized root ball here. Just gotta check on it, see where we might have some damage. I did hear that snap earlier. Okay, it looks like this piece here snapped away from the rest, but it's even got some roots on it. It's a bit interesting how it grew, but it should work just fine. Take a look at the other one. Looks about like it tried to grow here. Didn't quite make it. We'll just uh, snip this off. We'll go ahead and graft to this side here. So to transport these or even to store them for a little while, what I like to do is a uh, bag of sawdust. This is just a bag from some product we got. I don't even know what it's from. Um, some people use newspaper. I don't really like newspaper, but I found that sawdust will actually take in that moisture that it needs to absorb it, and then it'll uh, be there when the tree needs it back and it's a lot less prone to gather mold. So that's it for getting these stalks. All right, so taking a close look at this tree, we've got a lot of growth coming out, kind of almost coming out and spiraling on this tree. But what I found is on this branch here, if you follow it up, we've got this branch here growing back toward the center of the tree, which is one I won't want anyway. And also on this branch here, at the top growing back in uh, right there. So we're going to go ahead and take those two off and then use those as our grafting material. Those two wounds are gonna be so small, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's not gonna cause any true damage to this tree. To give you a better idea of how I'm gonna cut those branches off, we're looking at cutting at the branch collar, which is right here where you see the start emerging. Uh, so that's the spot that you're going to want to cut if you're doing this as well and that'll help this tree heal over a lot better this isn't the branch i'm cutting but uh, all of these branches come out in similar ways from the tree so those are always the spots that you want to cut in order to promote that healing
So another thing that's pretty cool when you're taking these guys is you can see the actual difference in that bark collar. So uh, you can tell this guy and this guy are our rootstocks and this one and this one are the scions. I could get enough material off of just a single one, uh, but I actually want some of that thicker material. I wanna use just a few buds here from the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and take these in and uh, get those roots cleaned up and get these grafted. All right, so I think what I've decided to do is just go ahead and take the one of these guys, get him grafted, and the other I will actually go ahead and leave in the fridge. I'm not exactly sure how long these take to come out of dormancy. From here up is actually dead. We're very close to it. I'm going to just trim some of that out. So roots are still moist. I've just gotten that rinsed off. This is likely where it was connected to that main tree. You can even see a bud right here that kind of wants to uh, come on out. We'll give it a little bit of height just to make sure that uh, that bud down there isn't affected because if it puts out a little bit of growth that'll help. I think I'll just take three buds here. I'm gonna get just a little bit of space between that bud and the top. My scion here is thinner so we'll only be able to line up one side. I definitely recommend a lot of practice before you get into doing some of these. Line those cambium layers up. When they're this small, the bark layers are going to be real close. So I like to actually take strips of bag. This is from like a potting soil bag and you don't need a whole lot. So I guess this, uh, this is me wrapping your present. If you've seen my bud grafting peach video, you'll know that with the parafilm I found it doesn't quite hang on as much as you want it to. And this will help hold in humidity. Stone fruits, cherries, peaches, nectarines, plums tend to dry out very easily. This is also advantageous with uh, apples and pears and the like as well. But uh, especially I found that stone fruit will dry out. Still got that bud down here that wants to come up. It's I didn't break it off. There's a few more like that. I'll go ahead and get this in some soil. I'll wait till I see the results on this one and I'll do the other if I need to. I think this is a good healthy amount of root. Maybe we should see some good growth once this uh, heals over. So, All right, well I've got the cherry potted up and watered. And down here in the basement where it's going to get a lot warmer and hopefully that'll help the healing process go quicker and perhaps wake up uh, the cherry tree from dormancy when it's the right time. My guess is that we're going to see that bud that's on the rootstock push out first but hopefully we'll see one of these two buds on the scion push out as well. If that bud does come out on the rootstock I'm going to uh, let it go for at least a few weeks until I see growth or at least some leaves coming out of the scion. And hopefully we're going to have a little tree in the spring so uh, my dad can plant that out at his house. And hopefully uh, we'll get several pies out of it. Thanks for watching.